note of these two graphs. You, But first, I want you to tell me, here's one graph B, here's another graph A. If we took the co-product, what would we get? Remember, this is like a souped up co-product. If we took the co-product of this and this, what would we get? What, what's the co-product of this graph and this graph? Ignore, ignore the red for now. What's the co-product of this and this one? What would it look like? What's that? Yeah, yeah okay. So you would have a graph, right? A co-product. The apex of a co-product is a graph, it's some graph. And what would that graph look like? The two graphs next to each other. Two graphs next to each other. Yeah. Remember John Bize's thing with the Tinker Toys? Do you remember that? Yeah. So so at the cost of uh, maybe um, uh, boring some of you, here's our Tinker Toys. I don't want to look at Tinker Bell. I want to look at Tinker Toys. Here it's this is what John said co-product is. You just put these things down next to each other. It's kind of neat. You say, wow, that's a lot of Tinker Toys. That's a lot of Tinker Toys, right? But but it, you know, what it has in volume, it lacks in creativity, right? Because <laughs> like you're not you're not doing the thing you're you really want to do, which is build things out of them. And to build things out of them, you have to stick them together. And that's what co-product is always going to be about. So let's let's go back from Tinker Tinker Toy or Tinker Bell or whatever, and let's go to um, go back to to this. So co-product would be taking this and just putting it next to this. It's just two components, right? You're either in one or the other. If you're dealing with a vertex, you're either in one or the other. Or if you're dealing with that, you're either in one or the other. There's no crosstalk. There's no coupling. There's no linkage. There's no plugging them into each other. There's no gluing them together, right? But push out lets us stick them together. So how does this work, right? Um, so this graph, so here we have a C, right? We have a C that is going to link these. So we have a C. And what is this? What is this morphism? It's a what? You told me earlier, and I want you to say it again. It's a what? It's a homomorphism. homomorphism. It's a graph homomorphism. It's, for example, it could be embedding this in here. And that's what's happening here. We say this goes to that. Hmm? And we say this goes to that. And by virtue of doing that, now we take these, this next to this, but we do what at this at these points? We we glue them. We identify these as the same. This tells us like what shape do we identify as the same? In these guys, right? Um, in this case, it's just a vertex. Mm? And then we we take these next to each other, but we we identify this. These are the same between them. And you get this. Do you see why you get this? Where's this component come from? Where did it come from? This one here, this this little linear one. Where did that come from? B or A? B. Where did this reciprocal one come from? A but they're glued around this point, right? If you get this idea of gluing, it's gonna take you very, very far. David Spivak, you know, really urges students to take that seriously. It sounds kind of hand wavy, but it's it's really useful. Are we good with this? All right, how about this? Okay, so you tell me, what what's going on here? What's different from here? There's some gluing. There's a whole lot of gluing going on, right? But what's the gluing on? Here it was on what? Okay. Vertex. What are we gluing on here? An edge and the related vertices, right? So we say, this. A, what is this thing? It's a what? Graph what? Homomorphism. I know you're getting sick of it, but but when you can start dreaming of these things like me, you can... You can be confident you, you've done this now. Okay, so I'm gonna grab one more. This embeds in that. You you got that? This embeds in that. This is what is S? It's a what? Grab one more. So it says 
where you know where this uh, embed it's a structure preserving mapping in here. So it identifies this with this, right? The fact that they're their shape is because that's the shape of C, you know. And then we we get this, right? Do do you see where that comes from? Yeah. Um, you know, this component, this one, where did that come from? Which one? From B or from A? From B. That's from B. This one, like going up like this and with this little curly Q, where did that come from? A. A. You know. But here you have them next to each other, but they're glued around this. They're identified around this. And that's the term of art. We identify these things uh, between them. Okay. Um, are, are you comfortable with this? You, you following us? Okay. Um, good. Now, sometimes there are different ways to identify. This is, um, uh, different, um, different things. For example, we might look at a different homomorphism, right? I mean, this was one homomorphism embedded it here, right? Um, and embedded this one here, but Another homomorphism for T would have mapped, embedded that here, right? And it would have embedded this at the same place. So what's the result of this going to be? What, you tell me, don't, don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't peek. What is it going to be? What is it going to be? Uh-huh. Okay, it's going to be... A, a big line, right? You're going to have this and then this, which is in common, and then this curly Q, right? At the end. It's like a flag flying, fluttering at the end, right? It kind of flutters around at the end. Are, are we good with this? So here we've identified these two and we've glued them together. Hmm? Now do you start to see why John was saying it was kind of like assembling the Tinker Toys? Because we... we kind of say this goes these two things articulate here right and here we are articulating this and this so we're, we're sort of identifying we're gluing together around that point and we get this and this is very versatile just by one homomorphism being different we can get all sorts of neat shapes but it's not just that it ain't just graphs hmm we can do this for any C set. Hmm? Because all C sets have finite limits and finite co-limits and so on. So we they have push-outs, they have pullbacks, they have they also have terminal objects and initial objects, etc. They have equalizers and co-equalizers, these structures you may someday hear about it. So here we can do them for discrete dynamical systems. Mm -hmm. So here's our discrete, do you remember the deal with discrete dynamical systems? We needed, remember that little one, two, three, four, and A, B and stuff. And we needed them to map to each other, not in any sort of way, but in a way that preserves, that honors, that honors that next operation. Remember that? So here we have that issue. So here, here could be a little, this is a discrete dynamical system, right? It's a it's an automaton. Mm -hmm. And we could have B this be this one, right? Where we have how many states does this have? Three. You get started maybe at this one, go to that one, and then you go to this one, you just stay there. You're trapped. Are we okay with that? Yeah, I mean, maybe we wouldn't want to be trapped there, but you know, it, you're comfortable. Oh. Okay. This one, how many states do we have? Four. You go and you get trapped. Um, and what are we doing here? We are identifying what with what? Yeah. Exactly. So we're identifying this with this. And now we got something like this. There's a common part. And like this state, where where did this state come from? From B or from A? This one here. From B, it's this one here, right? This one came from that one. Yeah. You know? This one, where did he come from? A. 
And she, where did she come from? This one here, right? But, it, and you can see it's, do you remember for dynamical systems, if we had co-product, think Tinker Toys next to each other, we have co-product of this and this, what would we have seen? Two separate ones, right? They would have been solitudes. They wouldn't have stuck together, right? They're just, you're either in this one or you're in that one and you go, but you're, you're never you're never in a state that is identified between them. No, no, no. It's just you're in one or the other, right? This or that, yeah? Um, but here we have a common state, right? Now, you're either in these states up here or, or these ones, or you're in a state that's in kind of in both. Right? Um, so you can identify. Um, no, I'm I'm wanting you to think about this a little bit. Like you might be excused for asking, this is kind of cool. Um, this is kind of cool. What if mm, what if we could have state here without without next? Uh it's it, yeah, without without next, if if we could somehow um could we have a a state by itself, which we identify this one and this one. Could we do that? Could we have just state, state, and and we we say we're going to consider a mapping to this and a mapping to this and identify them, glue them together around the state. Could we do that? Cannot. Cannot. Can can we go look at this? Can we, can I guess just go show this to you quickly? Is that okay? Okay, okay. Um Oh no. I closed it. Uh, okay. Um let me let me go get it back. Um I, I did a bad thing. Yeah, we can't now we don't have a well defined next, right? Yeah, we Exactly. We we can't we can't go here at the same time as we're going there. Yeah. We have to go to one or the other. And and so it would violate the mathematical structure of the situation. Um each state needs a well-defined what? Next state, right? Oh, yeah. Um okay, let me let me go down to this. I sort of screwed this up and and I'm I'm sorry by 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 accidentally closing it. Okay. Um look at that. Um okay, yeah, show you and put together a really nice, nice one here with a, in in color. Check check that out. Well, we may get to that. She did a great job with that. Okay, so here we're gonna do discrete dynamical systems, and we're going to do, and this is our do you remember this? This is our schema, right? Or displaying the structure, the presentation of the schema category. And do you remember I told you that, like, how many, so this is a presentation of a category. How many morphisms does this have? Okay, yeah, it has infinitely many. Because it, it it has next, and has next, next, and has next, 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 and it has next, 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 next. Now, those are, those are free, so each each one is in general different, but it has to be associative, right? Um, but there's also one called the ID, right? Which is not even shown, right? Um, has to be associative. We covered this in a past time. Okay, so so uh, here I I'm I'm sort of you know uh, ready to ready to go, and we're gonna go down, and we're gonna I'm gonna go get these ones here. That I graphed out. Here we go. Um, uh, so I'm gonna execute this um, for this. Do you recognize that from from this? You know, uh, this one up here. You know, um, and then we're gonna go uh, mumble. Um, three states then trapped. Right. Um, well, what I lack in elegance, I make up for. Uh, Clarity, at least. Um, okay. Um, 
Okay, three states then trapped. Here, here we are. Um, let's let's graph it out. Are we, do you recognize these? Okay. Now this is where we took the oh no DDS single state. Okay, I've got to go up and okay okay and mumble mumble. Uh, DDS single. Where's DDS single state? Um, must have defined it down. DDS. Hey, where's DDS single state? DDS, hey, where is it? DDS single state. Hey, oh my goodness. Well, you, you're you gonna tell me how I, it, it looks like I wiped it out or somehow. So you're gonna tell me how do I define this? This is a good, good little exercise. Maybe it's the most basic of these. How can I define a single state here? You tell me, sorry. One state and mm, and um don't get it confused with this. This is a graph of the schema, right? This this is yeah, but don't get them confused. So we're gonna have DDS single state, right? Equals a C set because it's a map from a, it's a C set, right? We're gonna get to the A in the A C set soon. Um and this is a DDS instance. It's a map from this schema into set. Are we good with this? Okay. Um, and how many states? One. And what's its next? What's it? What's next it? Is empty. Next is empty. Uh, uh, okay. So suppose I tried that. So 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 I welcome ideas. Well, suppose I tried this. Um, is next empty? Okay. What? It, let Let's think. This is a C set, right? Mm hmm. So here's my schema, right? This is an object in the schema. And the object gets mapped over to what set of states? What are the set of states here? One, right? One. This morphism next, that gets mapped over to what? So a morphism in the schema category presented here gets mapped over to a what? what so, so, so when you're mapping from a schema category, there's a morphism in the schema category. You know, for a graph, it'll be source and target. For here, it's next. When you map it over into set, each morphism in the schema category turns into a what in set? A morphism in set. And what's a morphism in set? It's a, what's a morphism in the category set? A function. It's a function, right? And what is a job of a function? To be a legitimate function, what does it need to do? If it's, so this is a function from what set to what set? Next is, a, is gonna be, when we map it over into set, when we, you know, I even have a picture of this, right? I, I even have a, even have a picture of this somewhere. So let, let's go drag that out. Oh, oh come on. Um, here we are. Um, uh, so we're going to have, um, here's set, right? Right? State gets mapped to state, right? And to a set of states. Are we good with that? And next, the morphism nets here, morphisms in the schema category. This is a C set. So it maps this over to a morphism in set. And a morphism in set is a what? It's a function. And this is a function from the set mapped to by the source of this arrow to the target, right? What's the source of this arrow next? State, right? And so it's it mapped from the set of states to the set of states. We go with that, the idea of next. What is the set of states for our particular case here? What's our set of states? Hmm? What's our set of states? One, one. So a function to be a legitimate function, it has to map for every element of the set from which it goes 
the set of states, it has to specify what it maps to. Mm -hmm. So we have to specify it logically. One. One. Right now it goes to zero, which is not a, I mean, I don't even know what that means, but uh, it goes to zero. I, I guess it means it's not specified and it cause problems. Anyway, do you see that this has to be, I mean, a function to be a, a function. It, its job in life, it, it has a contract. It has to fulfill. It has to map every, so a function goes from set X to set Y. It has to map every element of set X to some particular value of Y. Do you agree with that? So it has to map this to, to some state, and there's only one state, so it has to look like this, okay? Are we okay with that? Okay, so let's 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 map that out if we could, or let's let's do it. Two graph viz, right? Gra graph, graph viz, and then we have to do elements, and then we have DDS single state, and hey, get back here. Yeah, looks like that. Are we okay with that? Okay, now. So I want to ask you. I want to ask you. So, if that's the case, now we're back to this. This is our single state, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Can we find a homomorphism from this into this? To this state here. Remember the homomorphism property. Remember homomorphisms are what? Begins with N. It has two words. N and T. The first word begins with N. What a homomorphism in C sets. A homomorphism between C sets is a what? Natural, Natural transformation, right? And do you remember the naturality condition? Remember this? Do you, do you, do you, ah, I closed it again. It's, it's okay, let, let's go. No, let's not do that. Um, we have to do the naturality squares. It's exactly right. Thank you. Um, did I, no, I, I didn't want that one. I didn't want that one. I wanted the one on, wanted the one on levels of abstraction, sorry. Um, no, I'm really screwed up. Okay, uh, here we are. Um, okay. Um, okay, so we want this. Remember, we have to have this naturality square, right? Do you remember that? Okay. Um, so if we have a... We had a loop. I, uh, do I have a nice picture of it um uh, i don't have a nice picture of it i have a bad picture of it okay here it looks something like this right um and the naturality condition has to say look if we start in a certain state so this is one dynamical system this is the other dynamical system right if we start in a state we have to be able to do next in this dynamical system and then map over uh, to that, map over to here. Um, uh, so, so if we start in this state, mm -hmm. this is, remember, this is a dynamical system, right? It's a, it's a one state dynamical system. Are we okay with that? So if we're considering a homomorphism from this to this, we wanna say, we wanna identify this. We can either start in the state, take next here, and then map over, and we have to get the same thing in the naturality square, right? Um, if we do that, we have to get the same thing as if we map over and then take next, right? So we map over and then take next here. Will we get the same state? No, we will not. There is no homomorphism from this to this. It'll be unnatural. It will not be natural. Do you, do you get that point? We we can't just nicely embed this in this. This isn't just a sub piece of it. This isn't this isn't just a summary of this in a way that preserves its structure. No, this is this is different from it. And sometimes, as we've learned, there's 
no homomorphisms between certain things, right? Or this would be here. Um, these discrete dynamical systems. There's, sometimes there's no homomorphisms. So so there, as as much as we yearn to identify this one with this and, and identify it with this and say they're the same, we cannot. And it and it gets back to what Nona was saying earlier, which is actually it wouldn't make sense, right? Like this is stopping us from doing something that would be kind of nonsensical, right? Because each of these needs a well-defined next. And we'd suddenly be endowing if, if we some, somehow could shoehorn it, could, you know, um, could wrench it into this form and you have two next, that, that wouldn't make sense. It's not a dynamical system anymore. It's not a discrete dynamical system in this sense that it, anymore. So we, we couldn't have two necks. We need one next. And the, what this has told us is there ain't no next that's going to give you this. There's no natural way to capture this structure here. Are we okay with this? Okay. So maybe it seems frustrating, but this is capturing the essential mathematical structure. And the fact that there's no homomorphism is saying you can't do it. And, and that captures our intuitions, after all, if we reflect on it. But it's telling us immediately you can't do it. And categorical, we cannot do it. it if, if we ask, if we were to ask here, I'm going to go try it, right? Um, here's our single state. We kinda got, I kind of got distracted, right? Okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to map, I'm going to ask about the homomorphisms from the from this to this. You're, and you're going to tell me what homomorphisms are there from this to this. Okay, no, why, why can't I? Sometimes there's this thingy and sometimes it's not. What are the homomorphisms here? Mm -hmm. From from this to this, I'm saying. Well, okay, homomorphisms from this to this whole thing. How many homomorphisms? Is there one from here to here? The state to here? No. Is there one from here to here? Is there one from here to here? Is there a homo? Yes, <laughs> darn right there is. So, so let's let it do the do the walking. Um, there's one. There's one where it maps to state three. Hmm. What we want to do is we want to define a single that's small that the single won't have a next. Yeah, and you cannot do that. Because it has to map to a function which maps all the states to something, and and you, you just can't do it. You you wish you could do it and say, like, I'm not going to tell you which one it maps, but you can't because a function has to map all the elements of it, and it's saying it's not logically consistent. Eh? Now, yeah, I'm, I want to bring this back as I did in my opening remarks. To, so the astonishing thing that's taking place here, because when when we're doing this, it's not like this homomorphism has been designed by somebody just to operate with discrete dynamical systems. It's not it's not been hard coded in what discrete dynamical systems are into into CatLab or whatever. It, it doesn't have to be built in some C plus plus data structure for causal loop diagrams or, or, you know, graphs or, or, you know, these, uh, these uh, agent like, we can build all of these different things. We automatically get this ability to reason powerfully about what is a structure preserving transformation. And we can use these very general operations like homomorphism, regardless of whether we're dealing with graphs or whether we're dealing with discrete dynamical systems or whether we're dealing with, you know, this agent like schema or whether we're dealing with causal diagrams, or whether we're dealing with stock flow diagrams or whether we're dealing with system structure diagrams or whether we're dealing with an ABM. All of these just again and again and again and again, we can reuse these mechanisms. It's this incredible versatility and power of the software engineering involved because it it's like it's getting these incredibly reusable bits of logic that we get automatically. And again, so much of the strength here is we capture the mathematical essence 
and we encode our structures as data, not as code, not as opaque code that can't be analyzed and transformed. But instead, we put them in the, the mathematical structure is evident in clear light of day. And then we can reason about what are their connections to one another. If they're homomorphisms, we can reason about their co-product or their push out or their product and they're, they're an equalizer, a co-equalizer, an initial, a terminal, and, you know, the sub-object classifier. We can do all of it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, this, and, and just to drive this home, and we, we have to wrap up here, but um, I, I want to, I want to highlight that um, we can do this. I mean, do this for, for C sets in general, right? We, we've seen it for graphs and, uh, ah, I don't know what I just did. I did something. Undo. Boom. Okay. Undo. Boom. Undo. I don't know. I don't know what's going. On. Okay. Fine. Well. Um. Fine. Um. So we we did this for graphs and we did it for discrete dynamical systems. I just want to point you to the fact, and and this is provided up on the. The site, you know, if we have causal loop diagram, remember we have this kind of causal loop diagram, and you know, we saw what co-product was for these, right? Or we put these side by side, just like the Tinker Toys, like John said, side by side, right? And but here we can we can do something like take their push out. Mm -hmm. We could take a push out by identifying, like we could take um causal loop diagram A, um, uh, maybe this one, and causal loop diagram B. And then we could say with a push out square, this sort of thing, we could say, identify through a homomorphism, this vertex, you know, vertex one with this, vertex two with this, and this other way identify this is vertex one, vertex two, and we could glue them together. Hmm? we glue them together around the, this one to this one and this one to this one. We say, stick these together. Now, we might be able to stick together some of these as well, but we'd have to be really careful, you know, to, are the source and the target going the right direction? But at the least we could say, identify this vertex with this and this one with this, okay? And it's a little bit hideous. This is what I was doing kind of there, to, you know, at the, at the last, last minute, but, um, you know, here we have a vertex pair, which is a pair of, of vertices, right? And and I'm going to, with that vertex pair, say the first element of the vertex pair goes to this, the second one goes to this, the first one goes to this, first second one goes to that, as two homomorphisms. And then we take the push out and bada bing, bada boom, you, you get boom. Um, you get the the push out and what it lacks in beauty it makes up for in structure so here we go we have this vertex pair and we take the the homomorphisms from that vertex pair v v1 and v2 into causal loop diagram one and we find there's four of them you know v1 and v2 can both go to 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 vertex one in the homomorphism in the causal loop diagram 1a or they can go to one and two, or they can go to two and one, or two and two. It says, what do you want? And I say, okay, I want this guy here, the second one. And same thing with mapping the causal loop diagram B. So here I'm kind of mapping up, you know, I'm mapping up pair of vertices, this one and then this one, and I'm doing the same thing here. I'm basically saying, which of these things get identified with each other? Do you get that idea? It's, it's kind of like this, where... I said, you know, map this to this and this one to this and by extension, the edge to this. And and that has to be identified as these two vertices with this edge, right? A little bit similar, a little bit similar. Um, and you do that and, and I say, okay, I want number two here and then I'm gonna do it. And it produces something which again, lacks aesthetics, but has beauty of logical structure <laughs> so it, it, if you like stars maybe you like this but um right here's vertex one vertex two they're identified between the two and we have like uh, a minus link from there to there and uh, from 
here to here because source is going here, target's going here. And here's another minus link from source here to this and L plus from source to this one and, and this one from this source to, to this one. But anyway, the point is I glued those together. I took these, which were virtually fragmented, much like these, these um, uh, Tinker Toys, just sitting next to one another, and we stuck them together. And we by sticking them together, we could all do all sorts of neat things. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what someone did with Tinker Toys. You may not believe this. Founder of KSR Research. His name has been lost in my head right now, but I'll, um, I could look it up and so could you. Um, uh, so when he was little, he was a child, he built a computer out of Tinker Toy, a logical computer where he had OR gates and AND gates and NOT gates, and he could manipulate it and it could compute simple, I think it could like add to four digit numbers or something weird like that, but out of Tinker Toys. That's the power, ladies and gentlemen, of being able to put them together, glue them together, hmm? glue them together around common points. And the same thing, I will add, same darn thing, same darn story, same reusable components when we do this with, with, um, uh, we we can do this for our agent like schema, right? We could take a co product of two things. Here's a person, and they have an age group and province. Here's a person, they have the age group. I think you understand how this is like the co product of these two, right? Yeah. But we could identify them. Uh, we could identify certain things. So maybe you remember this one. What is this one saying? Do you remember the idea? Is this is a pattern, and we can map it into. We can map it into a, a population. So what would this be saying? If this were a pattern, we were finding homomorphisms into a population, what would it be looking for? Mm -hmm. It would be looking for what? I'll give you a hint. Two people with what? Is it any old two people? Same. same they have the same province same. and they have the same age group, right? Uh, and... And I'm saying we can do that by taking our single person. Here's a single. I don't mean they're unmarried. It's just they're they're they're, they're single. And we could take a same province. We could here we have one age group in one province. Mm -hmm. Note there's no problem because there's no morphism out of this that we have to specify. So these are just kind of destinations. So we could have one of those and one of those. And then we can have a homomorphism that says, okay, um, uh, we're going to map um, age group in person one. Um, this will go to the age group of person one and it will go to the age group of person two. This will go to the province in person one, the province in person two. And that's exactly what we do. We have these homomorphisms from same province and age group, these two things alone into single person. Single person is this guy up here, right? And 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 we just identify in the single age group, it maps to the age group of one, the age group of the other. You know, that's what this the single person and then this one uh kind of similar idea and and we end up um uh we end up being able to create the same structure that we could define manually. We just wire them up, right? Push outs, ladies and gentlemen, are going to be key to our future. Indeed, our, our destiny in joining together, in, in composing stock flow diagrams, composing full-fledged causal loop diagrams, composing system structure diagrams, and indeed, composing these patterns we use in agent-based models. They provide this key glue. They provide this ability to stick things together out of which, which allow us to turn the set of disconnected, fragmented components into interconnected holes. And indeed, category theory, I believe, is a pillar of system science. 
a science of the whole that is all about the connections between things, not merely the pieces. And push-outs provide us that, that bridge into that world. And we're going to be using them extensively for this course, okay? And in our, our daily work. And I think with those words, I will close this session. And uh, I will uh, close uh, close today's class. We will be next week continuing on to um, we'll introduce a C sets, attributed C sets, um, how we have attributes in a pragmatic way. I'm not going to go into all the pro functor based theory or slice categories. We could always do that later. But then we're going to be going on to to talk about the basics of these structures uh, for causal loop diagrams, for system structure diagrams, or and, and particularly for stock flow, and how we can join them together with things like um, structured co-spans. And their push-outs will be the, a star of the show. Okay? Okay. All right. That's all for today. Thank you. It's been a brutal day. Um, and uh, I... I'm skipping the, I, I canceled the group meeting tonight so that I can rest. Okay, take care there.